Hello and good morning, you two. How are you doing today? Well, how are you? Absolutely fantastic. I'm really in love with Grown and Gospel. And the reason why is because you, you, you answer the question, what happens beyond the fame? Like your parents. You know, when you guys, you know, I mean, the music doesn't just stop at your parents. It continues on through family. And that's what you're proving. Right. Right, absolutely, for sure. And we wanted to give an authentic and organic um, view behind that because a lot of people have misconceptions about what to expect because of our legendary and influential parents. So we were determined to show the real of the real. How do you get beyond that wall, Jay? I mean, because I mean, they, they, you've you've you know, you're you're surrounded by it as children. You, most of the time, we understand it, but we really don't understand it until all of a sudden we realize, oh my God, we've got the gift. What are we going to do with it? Um, you know, I think it's some some families. Some people are you know, families are lawyers. Some families are doctors. It's just, it becomes the family business, right? You know, so you just kind of yeah. pick up on it and you. We're trying to carry the torch and not drop it, you know, try to try to honor the legacy and live our lives as well. So we just doing the best we can do. The fashion on this show, Grown and Gospel, I love it. I think it's ins- inspirational and it's also influential in the way that it will show people dress up, dress up and feel good about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. Right. Yeah, but you'll yeah. also see that some differences between what what some think is fashion and what yes. some think is, um, you know, uh, I guess label driven. I would say label don't necessarily mean it look good. It just means you might have possibly spent a lot of money if it ain't a knockoff. So, uh, yeah, fashion you can be fashionable without labels. I just throw that out there. <laughs> That's right, Bray. That's right. But we Detroit, though. Detroit is known for being big and being, you know, furs and gangers. And, you know, we, we know for that. So, you know, we like to dress it up and make it right, you know? Detroit is that city that that speaks the street. I, I I'm blessed with the opportunity to talk with a lot of musicians from all genres of music from Detroit. I love the drive to share the story. That's what it's always about the story, the story. And then and it's it's almost like Detroit is the heartbeat of America. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You got Motor City, you got Motown. So we 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 specialize in all things <laughs> consumer driven: cars, yeah. music, hair. Fashion, absolutely. Yeah. Like we are that deal. <laughs> and, for, and Motown is such a a special place. Like mm-hmm. we're talking about eighty six number one records. That's more than Elvis, the Beatles, the Rolling Stones yep. put together. A bunch of yep. black men from the East Side. So you know, yep. Detroit has influenced the whole world. Yeah, for sure, for sure. When it comes to gospel music, you know, just spiritual music in general these days has changed so much because I'm with Elevation Worship down here in Charlotte, and and the way that that Christian music is growing, it blows me away. But you know what, though? They couldn't do it without that touch of gospel. And I think so many people need to understand what gospel is. It's the good news. We're literally spreading the gospel of Christ and letting people know that He walked with the tax collectors and the prostitutes and the, you know, he was among the people and showing them a better way through discipleship. And he didn't make nobody feel bad about it. He didn't shame nobody. He told you the truth. Now he was going to give you that truth, (laughs) but he did it with so much love and kindness that that's what actually drew you know, men to him. And that's what we're called to do as well. And that's how we use our testimony to say, hey, we might have ran in them streets and the streets, they continue to call us and and beckon, (laughs) beckon us to come back. But we always try to make sure that we are staying focused on our God, on our faith, so that we can show other people that you don't have to succumb to the traps of this world, but that you can be um, vigilant in your servanthood to the Lord. The show is about truth, trust, and darkness and i love that side of it because that that to me is the reality of our moment of now and people need to understand that we can vicariously live through your decisions yeah for sure for sure i want to throw out there that with my growing up and having examples of people you know whether it's my parents my grandparents my aunts and uncles there was this aspect of feeling like they were 
unreachable. They were untouchable. Like they were so much holier than I could ever be that it really made me challenge or question my faith, I should say, because it was like, hey, I can never live up to that standard. And it wasn't until I started learning more and they started sharing more that I'm like, oh, wait, we're actually way more alike than I thought. And so that relatability, that's what clued me in on. You can reach more when you're relatable and when they can see that you're so similar and we're not too far removed from one another. Wow. Hey, Jay, uh, Pastor Furtick this past week said that um, that we should make peace with our strength because we're at war with our with our darkest times every single day. How do you how do you make peace with your strength? Hmm, that's a really good question. Um, to make peace with your strength. I like the way you put that, actually. Uh, you know, I think I, I've learned to not lean on my personal ability to do anything, right? That the strength that I actually need um, is always available to me and that, you know, there is a higher power that I can lean on, you know, to actually get through situations. So, you know, I don't know that I'm really trying to lean on my own personal strength. I think that I'm, I am reconciling who I am and the, my weaknesses yeah. and, you know, wrapping my weaknesses up in a God who can help me be better. Don't you think, Bree, that with a show like Grown and Gospel is, is just, as, just as storytelling as Jesus sitting at the well with the woman? That woman was not supposed to come up and have a conversation with Jesus. But yet the same thing is here with Grown and Gospel. How many lives are you changing with people that just happen to come to your well? Oh, my gosh. So many. Like, And it's inspiring for me because we're... I have my doubts and, you know, the same enemy that's out to to get everybody, he out to get me too. So the question in my mind is like, hey, who am I really helping? And each time that I am open and transparent about, hey, you know, I was in a club, you know, shaking it for for some money. Like, I, I know what that's like and I know how it's portrayed in the industry of like this glitz and glam and like it's kind of glorified and magnified as this, um, as this fun and entertaining aspect of, of life. But for the person that's going through it, like I know what that's like to be objectified in that way. I know what how it affects your marriage when you've been used to putting yourself yep. out there like that and then you, your husband wants something sacred at home. But what is sacred anymore if everybody has had an opportunity to experience you in that way to some degree? So the, the experience with connecting with people who feel like they can never reach God, that for me is what made all of this worth it. Because like you said, coming to my well, Mm -hmm. like the woman at the well, when people can realize that, hey, if God is working on you and he's using you in a mighty way, he can do the same for me too. And that right there is what I'm really just trying to encourage everybody. Like I promise you, if the Lord can save me, he can definitely save you for sure. I love it. Please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for the two of you. Yay. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. (laughs) Thank you so much. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. You bet. You be brilliant today, okay? Thanks. You too.